What are we going to make today? Well, we're going to try and make some dip dye bunting. As you can see, I've got some over here. Lovely rainbow colours. Dip dye is different than painting because um, instead of painting on the surface, you're going to submerge the material into a liquid dye to change the colour of it. I'm just going to show you what I mean when I say to submerge material into some dye. I have here some liquid dye in a container and I have here a piece of white paper. So instead of painting on the surface, I'm going to just submerge it. And you can see that the dye is soaked up into the paper. So we have changed the colour of the paper by dipping it. There we go, can you see that? So obviously if we want to do dip dye, we need dye, but um, we can't always have dye at home, can we? So we might have to use some things that we find around the house to do the dyeing with. So that could be, oh, it could be food colouring or paint or even tea and coffee. Here are the things we will need for this activity. Some containers, something to use as a dye, such as food dye or food colouring and maybe some tea bags or food spices. These are all household items. You will also need some water to mix your dye with, a stirring implement like a paintbrush or a stick, some wool or string to hang your shapes up when you've finished, and something to put a hole, like a hole punch, through the paper. You will also need some newspaper to create a drying station for your shapes. So I've just found this um, clue that says Follow the arrows into the cupboard. What? Well, I better do that. I see here it's another clue and it says be careful there is crocodiles on the stairs what another clue you're almost there well, that's great news I've been traveling for hours looks like we could be here what is it Aha, wow, you found so. What is it? Ah, here we go. Food colorings and some food spice. Wow, so we can make dyes out of these. For this part of the activity, cutting out your paper, you will only need two things really scissors and the paper that we're going to be cutting out. Remember to make your paper absorbent. The other thing is you may want a drawing implement if you like to draw your shapes first. So a pen or a pencil is fine, but that's optional. So now we can get on with the cutting. Okay, the first thing you need to do is cut your paper shapes 
from your absorbent paper, in this case, kitchen towel. So as you can see here, I've got two sheets of paper together and that's just to make your shape when you dip it in the dye a little bit more robust. So I've got the two sheets together here and I'm just going to cut a triangle shape first. So I'll fold it in half again and cut a triangle. You can do whatever shapes you like. So this is like a traditional bunting shape triangle. There we go. There's one shape. Okay. The next shape I'm going to try and do is a heart shape. I'm just going to rip the paper towel. So I've got two sheets again together. To make a heart shape, fold your kitchen paper in half. And then we want to kind of, I'm going to draw it actually with a pen. So we're going to draw like a half of the heart shape so which is kind of like a teardrop shape go to the kitchen towel can you see that that's like half of the heart and then we can cut it out Let's open it out. Hi, mixing dye. Take one bottle of food colouring and one plastic container. Put a few drops of the whoop, food colouring in the plastic container. One, two, three. Do you see that there? Then we're just going to add some water. So, do a few drops of that. So, whoops. There you go. And if you want to, you can mix it with a paintbrush or a stick. There you go. Next, we are going to make our dip dye bunting. Um, we're going to do ours outside, but you can do yours any way you like. So here's some of the things that we need when we're doing the dip dyeing outside. First, we've got um, uh, some a protective cloth on the floor. If you're doing this on si inside, you could use a tablecloth. We've got our dip dyes already mixed here, made out of food colorings. This one's tea. And this one is turmeric as well. Then we've got our shapes that we've cut out of kitchen towel, just there. I'm going to lay them out in a minute. And then over here, we've got a drying station. We've had to put a weight on it because it's a little bit windy. But we're just going to... pieces together Dip in here. You see that
squeeze in the middle. And this of tea colour. So I've uh, set up a little dipping station here. I'm now going to try my new dipping station out. So let's go with these triangular pieces. And we're going to go, what colour is that? Orange there. We're going to do blue. Red, yellow, and I think this is pink. Wow, that one's a gorgeous one. I'm going to put it there to dry. And we're going to do. now for the central piece so I'm just gonna fold it carefully like that and try and get the center in a different color I'm not really sure what color this is I think it might be red or pink let's go for it anyway whoop there we go a bit more there there we go I'm just gonna put it on the drying area which is some newspaper. See how the dye starts to travel up the absorbent paper. It begins to spread. So let's try another colour. We've got purple. looking quite good actually Oop. there we go so take a look at these lovely rainbow shapes that we've dip dyed you see all the beautiful colors wow this is really incredible the thing is, when you've done your dip dyeing, your shapes might be really wet, so they're going to take a while to dry. So you might want to speed the process up by just doing a bit of blotting. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Take some sheets of newspaper or more kitchen towel and place them on top of your shapes and press, press down on there and then move it along just to squeeze out some of the excess water. Just keep doing that. So when you squeeze some of the water out, you'll see some of the dye comes out, but that's fine. You know, there's still a lot of dye on these shapes. And also, you may be able to use that once it's dry, cut out some more shapes to add to your bunting. Making holes in the dip dye shapes, use some Play-Doh or clay like this, roll it into a ball, place on a surface, get a pencil, get your shape, place it on top. Pierce a hole with the tip of the pencil where you want the hole to go. 
Swizzle it around to make sure you've got a good hole. I'll repeat. This one's a bit thinner actually. use a hole punch. It could be a double hole punch or but it depends on the thickness of the paper. This one is slightly thicker paper. If it's more softer like the paper towel like this it's probably best to do it with a pencil. So you could do it either way. As long as you make a hole, it doesn't matter. Threading shapes. So we've got a pile of the dip dyed shapes here. All have got little holes in them. So now you need a piece of string or some wool like I've got here. And you're going to thread it through the shapes. Can you see, I've put a little bit of tape on the end. It just makes the threading easy. It's like a bit like having the plastic bit on a shoelace. So I'm going to start. That's just the cat in the background having a good old scratch on the settee. That hole isn't quite big enough. When you add in another one, just move the other one and slide it along like this so you've got more room. Hang your bunting in a really cool creative place.